Hello, and welcome to a Trollmaster tutorial. In this video, we're going to be talking about the HydroX. The HydroX is a single zone environmental control system, and it can provide you with all round controllability, precise controlling and monitoring of the growing environment, including grow lights, temperature, humidity, CO2 level, and pretty much anything else in your grow room. The system is modular in design, meaning everyone can customize the system based on their own needs. Now, the HydroX system is made up of four major parts. The main controller, the sensors, the lighting controls, and the device modules. You can set your desired or ideal parameter settings, such as day and night temperature, CO2, or humidity levels in the main controller, and the sensors will keep on monitoring these parameters 24-7. If any of the sensors detect that a parameter reading is out of the desired range set in the main controller, the controller will then trigger the device modules to react in accordance with the settings in the controller helping keep parameter reading stable within an ideal range. So based on how you set in command, the controller can turn off your AC when the room is too cold, turn on the humidifier when it's too dry, or even dim your lights when the temperature is higher than the preset level. To complete the system and connect the main controller with the sensors and the device modules, HydroX communicates by using RJ12 cables. Now, all controllers, sensors, and modules come with one set of RJ12 cable and a Y splitter. But what is a Y splitter? This is a Y splitter. And our plug and play design simplifies the installation process. The sensors and the module can also be daisy chained together, allowing for flexible installation and potential future expansion for our new products. To make installation even easier, you can use our eight port splitter hub, SPH1 instead of using the Y-Splitter. The ECS 500-500 foot extension RJ12 cables are also available to allow customized cable links for a more flexible and tidy installation. On the HydroX controller, you can check your room status on the LCD interface and change different settings on the controller by navigating with these buttons on the panel. You can check parameters such as PPFD, CO2 PPM, humidity, and temperature. On your alarm page, you can view your alarm history and check on any currently active alarms. Within the control panel, you can control lighting, temperature, humidity, CO2, and time. On the system page, you have access to basic settings of the controller, for example, languages or the temperature unit. HydroX can also be controlled by using the free smartphone app, TM+. It offers remote monitoring, settings and receives push alert notifications so you'll have complete control of your grow room anytime, anywhere. You can also check the historical chart, trend and changes on the parameters all on your phone. The sensors play a crucial part in completing the whole system and the controller must be connected to the sensors to function. Right now we have the sensors hooked up to the main controller through this cable here. And all data collected by the sensors will be displayed on the LCD screen located on the main controller. The HydroX controller HCS1 comes with a standard multi-purpose 3-in-1 sensor, the MBS-TH. Now remember, you need to add the sensor to the main controller for the system to work. Each HydroX controller can connect with a 3-in-1 sensor, one CO2 sensor, up to five smoke detectors and five water leak sensors. All these sensors can be daisy chained back to the controller sensor port with either a Y splitter or an SPH1 splitter hub, which allows up to eight outputs on each hub. The HydroX sensors can monitor temperature, humidity, CO2, and light schedule. We'll start with temperature and humidity first. To monitor temperature and humidity, you can use the MBS TH that comes with the controller. The photocell can detect the presence of light and determine if it should go with day or night mode setting in the growing area. You'll need an MBS S8 CO2 sensor if you'd like to monitor the CO2 levels in your grow room or if you're using any CO2 devices like a CO2 tank or exhaust fan. Keep in mind that you won't be able to control CO2 devices if a CO2 sensor isn't installed in the first place. We also have a pioneering MBS PAR sensor that offers use as a cost-effective way to control lights based on PPFD for optimized light use. That's especially helpful in a greenhouse environment where supplemental lighting and natural lighting are used. It'll keep on monitoring and sending the current PPFD level to the controller for it to automatically adjust the output level 
of your supplemental lighting system and maintain the desired PAR light level that you've set. Now it's recommended you place the PAR sensor right at the top of the canopy or as close as possible for more precise measurements. Remember to remove the cap before you use the PAR sensor. You can find more details of this in our other video. Now we have two other sensors for monitoring purposes only. The first one is the MBS SD smoke detector and the other one is the WD2 water detector. These two sensors will send warning alerts to the Trollmaster app when any abnormal conditions are detected to alert you about the potential issues. For example, the smoke detectors can alert the grower when any one of them detects smoke within the growing area, making it a great safety measure against fire. The proper and recommended placement of the smoke detectors is high up above all devices as smoke moves upwards. The water detectors also make a great addition to the system. Just place a WD2 at floor level or anywhere you'd like to watch out for water spills or floods. And if any one of the detectors you've installed has its touch spot coming into contact with water, you'll get an alert on the app. Trollmaster offers a series of lighting adapters for different lighting systems available on the market. When used with the right Trollmaster LMA lighting adapters, the HydroX system can control almost all horticultural lighting systems, LED or HID. Remember, you should never connect your lights directly to the controller. An LMA lighting adapter is necessary in the setup for light control. There are two ports on the bottom of the main controller for lighting control. The two separate channels allow you to run and control two different light schedules at the same time. But keep in mind, you'll need two LMA lighting adapters in this case, one for each system. Think Row LEDs powered by Trollmaster are a different case because they have two types of light, full spectrum white light and a red light incorporated in one fixture. If you're a Think Grow light user, you'll only need an LMA T for both line one and two. Line one controls full spectrum light and line two controls red light, such as far red or deep red. When everything is connected, the LCD display on the HCS1 will show you the current lighting conditions and access to all settings. Simply click three times on the enter button and you'll have access to all these settings information. You can check out our other LMA introduction videos for more information. Other than the LMAT, we currently have six other lighting adapters for a broad range of lighting systems available in the market. As the sensors complete their work of monitoring and collecting data to the controller, the device modules will respond by taking action and controlling the devices following the instructions given by the controller. The data module is kind of like a bridge between the devices and the controller. So not only do you have to link the device and the modules, you'll also have to connect the modules to the controller with an RJ12 cable so that they can communicate. The HydroX system can control most horticultural devices in the market including AC systems, humidifiers, exhaust fans, fans for commercial use, CO2 tanks, etc. If you're regulating your room temperature with cooling or heating devices like an aircon or heater which is 10 amps at 120 volts or 240 volts, you can use our temperature control modules the DST1 or DST2. And go for a TS1 or 2 if you're using an HVAC system. As for mini-split ACs and some window-type AC units, you can use the ARS-1 AC Remote Station Module, which is a universal controller that can control all AC units that come with an IR remote controller. The ARS-1 will learn the language of the aircon so that the controller will be able to communicate with and send signals to the module to control the device. Be sure to fix the IR emitter on the wall and point it towards the AC receiver for it to work properly. For more in-depth explanation on how the ARS-1 learns AC signals, check out our other videos. To give you a better idea, we'll show you how to set the temperature set point. Press enter to access the setting page and select temperature. Then you can pick your device. Press enter to change the temperature, which we've set to 96 degrees Fahrenheit, and press enter again to confirm the change. And when the sensor detects a drop in temperature lower than the set point, the controller will be notified and assign the device module to turn on the heater until the temperature rises to the set point. 
As I've mentioned, you need to hook up CO2 sensor to the controller before you can control any CO2 devices with your system. A DSC CO2 module is what you need if you want to control any CO2 devices such as a CO2 tank or an exhaust fan based on the CO2 levels of your room. Now depending on your needs, when the CO2 level below or exceeding a set point is detected, the controller will trigger the DSC modules to control the on or off functions of the CO2 regulating devices. Here's a demonstration on how to set it. Click enter to access the setting page and select CO2. Then pick your device. Then click enter to set the device to trigger when it's below a CO2 set point. And click enter again to confirm. Move down and click enter to choose your desired set point, which we've set as 1760 ppm. And click enter again to confirm. Now, when the sensor detects a drop in CO2 to a level that's lower than the set point, the controller will trigger the device module to turn on the CO2 tank until the CO2 rises to the ideal range. To regulate the humidity, there are multiple options of humidity control modules, including the HS1, the TSH1, and the DSH1 and DSH2. The HS1 is mainly used with commercial dehumidifiers that come with a low volt control option, so the dehumidifier can be controlled by an external humidistat. The HS1 is wired and works exactly like an external humidistat. For any temperature or humidity devices that accept a 0 to 10 volt input signal like EC fans, variable speed fans or vents, you can control it with the TSH1. Another simple plug and play option for humidity device modules are the DSH modules. You can use them to control any standard humidifying or dehumidifying devices through the system. Press enter to access the setting page and select humidity. Then pick your device. Then move down and press enter to set your ideal humidity level, which we've set as 65% here. And click enter again to confirm. Now, when the sensor detects a rise in humidity to a percentage that's higher than the set point, the controller will trigger the device module to turn on the dehumidifier, and it'll stay on until the humidity returns to the initial humidity level that you've set. In cases where you need the device to work with two trigger conditions, you can piggyback two DS modules, but this method has its limitations, which is why we've provided you with a more updated and flexible solution. And that's where the DCC one comes in. To use the DCC1, you need to pair it with a DS module. For example, you could pair it with a DSC1 to control CO2 levels, a DSH1 or 2 to control humidity, or DST1 or 2 for temperature. Or you could pair it with a DSP1 to be used as a programmable timer. To learn more about this product, go check out our other videos. With the complete HydroX system, the device modules can control all the horticultural devices according to the data gathered from the sensors and settings from the controller, allowing the room to run automatically 24-7. This lets you have all-time monitoring and incorporate flexible growing recipes for better plant growth. Now remember, the HydroX is a single room, single zone environmental controller. To control multiple rooms, you will need multiple controllers.